It pains me to write this as Ukraine and Russia are merged in my blood, in my heart, and in my thoughts. But extensive experience and friendly contacts with Ukrainians in the camps have shown me how much of a painful grudge they hold. Our generation will not escape from pain for the mistakes of our fathers. To stamp one's foot and shout, this is mine, is the easiest option. It is far more difficult to say, you may live as you please. Surprising as it may be, the Marxist doctrine that nationalism would fade has not come true. On the contrary, in the age of nuclear research and cybernetics, it has for some reason flourished. With Ukraine, things will get extremely painful. But one has to understand the degree of tension they feel, as it has been impossible for centuries to resolve it, it is now down to us to show some good sense. Let them live it, let them see how it works for them. They will soon find out that not all problems are resolved through separation. Since in different regions of Ukraine there is a different proportion of those who consider themselves Ukrainians, those who consider themselves Russians, and those who consider themselves neither, there will be many difficulties there. Maybe it will be necessary to have a referendum in each region and then ensure preferential and delicate treatment of those who would want to live. Прекрасно знают, но заметьте, стреляют по домам, попадают в жилые дома, попадают, попадают в инфраструктуру, детские сады, школы, больницы. Для чего стреляют именно по, по мирным жителям? Not the whole of Ukraine in its current form of Soviet borders is indeed Ukraine. Some regions on the left bank of the river Dnieper clearly lean more towards Russia. As for Crimea, Khrushchev's decision to hand it over to Ukraine was totally arbitrary. 1968, The Gulag Archipelago, Part 5, Chapter 2. I find this fierce intolerance in the discussion of the Russo-Ukrainian problem fatal for both nations and beneficial only to their enemies, particularly painful because I myself am of mixed Russian and Ukrainian origin. I grew up under the joint influence of both these cultures and never saw and do not see any antagonism between them. In my heart, there is no place for a Russo-Ukrainian conflict. 1981, from a letter to the Toronto Conference on Russo-Ukrainian Relations. Ну, сейчас я думаю, что хоть бы наладился мир, да? я не знаю. Так хочется мира. There are whole regions in Ukraine with a predominantly Russian population. How many people there are who find it difficult to choose which of the two nationalities they belong to? How many people there are of mixed origin? How many mixed marriages there are? By the way, Nobody has until now thought of them as mixed, but this vastness is diverse and it is only the local population that can decide the fate of their locality or their region, while each newly formed ethnic minority in that locality should be treated with the same non-violence. 1990, rebuilding Russia. Yeltsin's period was characterized by a no less irresponsible attitude to people's lives, but in other ways. In his haste to have private rather than state ownership as quickly as possible, Yeltsin started a mass 
multi-billion dollar fire sale of the national patrimony. Wanting to gain the support of regional leaders, Yeltsin called directly for separatism with laws that encouraged and empowered the collapse of the Russian state. These, of course, deprived Russia of its historical role for which it had worked so hard and lowered its standing in the international community. All this was met with even more hearty Western applause. Putin inherited a ransacked and bewildered country with a poor and demoralized people. And he started to do what was possible, a slow and gradual restoration. These efforts were not noticed nor appreciated. When I returned to Russia in 1994, the Western world and its states were practically being worshipped. Admittedly, this was caused not so much by real knowledge or a conscious choice, but by the natural disgust with the Bolshevik regime and its anti-Western propaganda. This mood started changing with the cruel NATO bombings of Serbia. It is fair to say that all layers of Russian society were deeply and indelibly shocked by those bombings. The situation then became worse when NATO started to spread its influence and draw the ex-Soviet republics into its structure. This was especially painful in the case of Ukraine, a country whose closeness to Russia is defined by literally millions of family ties among our peoples, relatives living on different sides of the national border. At one foul stroke, these families could be torn apart by a new dividing line, the border of a military bloc. So the perception of the West as mostly a night of democracy has been replaced with the disappointed belief that pragmatism, often cynical and selfish, lies at the core of Western policies. For many Russians, it was a grave disillusion a crushing of ideals. In this context, it was easy to get accustomed to the idea that Russia had become almost a third world country and would remain so forever. Они отказываются от детей, и дети опять становятся такими же, как они были в детстве. Ну, девчонки, и семьи денег нету, они просто продаются мужикам, там, ходят с ними, зарабатывают деньги. Там их кормят, поют, а потом их ебут. Ну, так же, девочки. Делают. Был у меня один мужчина, но только я не захотел с ним никуда ехать. Он мне наобещал, наобещал, а я потом подумал, понял, что это плохо. Не ехать, и ехать с ним не надо, что он плохой. Обычно хорошие люди такого не обещают, как он мне наобещал. Давай я тебе дам 500 баксов, поехали ко мне домой. Я не поехала к нему домой, чтобы я с ним трахалась. И Витик смотрела у него дома, чтобы еще у меня он фотографировал раздетое. Ну, и которые есть по педофилу просто, тоже жалеют, что они чем-нибудь там заболели, сейфили, не спит. When Russia started to regain some of its strength as an economy and as a state, the West's reaction, perhaps a subconscious one, based on erstwhile fears, was panic. Isn't it a luxury for the West to be pushing Russia aside now, especially in the face of new threats? If we look far into the future, one can see a time in the 21st century when both Europe and the USA will be in dire need of Russia as an ally. 2007, interview with Spiegel magazine.